so first time after a fight with Mateusz Gamrot, after the trilogy with Mateusz Gamrot, uh, Norman Park is our guest. Hello, Norman. It is very nice to see you. Cześć, Martina. <laughs> very nice, very nice Polish. Uh, I know that you are learning some Polish words, so this is very nice word. I uh, I think that some explicit uh, words are also in your. Uh... <laughs> That's the some Polish people learn to me them words. It's not the best way to go about it. <laughs> <laughs> so good people, good people. Uh, Norman, um, it is nice to see you smiling. I know that for every fighter, for every uh, guy who has a big heart, uh, hard as a lion to fight, it's hard to take a loss. Uh, so I would like to know how do you manage after this fight with Mateusz? How do you feel now? Um surprisingly i i know i lost the fight right i got beat in the fight which is obvious um but overall um i think uh well i know i'm more happy than i ever was even after them five wins that i had previous but um i know i made some mistakes on my side which uh obviously if i had a crack at them and had them in line a little bit better the fight would have been more better for the fans too and it would have been a lot more uh, even fight, a closer fight, should I say. Um, but uh, overall, um, I lost the fight, but I'm more happy. I'm more happy with my life, uh, in, uh in that respect. So it's like um, I lost one thing, but on the other side, I'm happy. So that's that's all that matters. And like I lost to, I lost against like not not like I lost against a like a, a nobody person. Or someone who's like low ranked. I lost against someone who's a high level fighter, um, but I'm a wee bit disappointed. That, well, a good bit disappointed that I uh, messed around with this whole weight. It's always been a problem with me for the last while uh, lately, you know. And uh, the, I let a lot of fans down. People who had bought the pay per view to watch me put on a good fight because we had uh, them first two fights that were really close and a lot of controversy. Then you had the whole. Uh, me was me missing weight and then fighting and then fighting against the gamer but uh like i was in the fight there my my body was there but my head was still back in the change rooms or else back home <laughs> <laughs> so um but i said to myself uh i said to the matchmaker in the ksw i says i'm gonna have it one more time to make lightweight and i'm going to do it my way like i'm going to make lightweight one more time if i miss it and there's any problem then I'm just going to stop fighting that lightweight uh, game because I'm getting a little bit older now too and um, I'm getting a little bit older and it's getting harder maybe it's time to do that or maybe it's just if I don't get too heavy in between fights so this is why this is why I came back training already mm -hmm. well, one week after the fight I'm back training my face look it's not too early. It's not too early. How how is your head? Because I know that you were in hospital after the fight and, and do some yeah. Some stuff. There's nothing in there. There's nothing inside that head. Okay. Anyways, you're all right. You're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm joking, but okay. Um, no, we 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 went we went we went to the uh, to the hospital after we were there for a long time, like maybe two hours. And my coach was due to fly back. We we're all due to fly back, leave the airport or leave the hotel at like four o'clock in the morning to get the flight for like five or six or something mm -hmm. and uh time was picking time was ticking i says right screw this let's just go more right once i get back home we can check my head i'm fine my face just felt bust up i didn't feel dizzy or anything uh mm -hmm. it's just my face was completely bust you know mm -hmm. like sliced open very easy and um <laughs> we went in and then i got the scan done the guy says yep head skull's thick you know you're good it's just <laughs> your face is soft <laughs> and i said ah, i'll be all right you know let's be fighting another day so so uh, you said, uh, Norman, you said that uh, you plan to have one more fight in lightweight. And what K uh, KSW is um, telling you about this? Do they plan uh, to have you in a lightweight or maybe they didn't uh, uh, didn't say anything about your plans and maybe they really plan you to move up to welterweight? How, how does it look like? Well, after the whole, uh, the whole weight problem, you know, it was like... <sighs> The weight where I should have been uh, maximum was uh, 14 pounds from from one uh, one day out from the fight or one day out from the weigh-ins, which is I can make that no problem. And then I realised I thought, okay, right, um, right. And I know that you had Jacob Morich on. We were all talking about the weight problem. I went home and did this, but when I came home, my ate perfect. I never changed my diet or anything. Mm -hmm. I did everything right. Um, maybe what I could have done a little bit more when I came back more was. Um, 
well, I had a little problem with that. It was my knees. I had a problem with my two knees. Um, couldn't really do some of the sprints that I wanted to do or the cycling. It was kind of hurting my knees too. So maybe if I had the chance to do that a wee bit more, my weight could have been lower because I did that for the fight with Jossi. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to cycle a lot, you know, maybe after training or maybe just nighttime before you go to bed. And this helps just lower your weight too, naturally. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said to my coach that, you know, because my knees were hurting and I was taking stuff for my knees, uh, I think this, uh, you know, was a bit of a problem. But still, I could have made the weight anyway. But then on the fight week, you know, I was speaking with Jacob Morich and he mm-hmm. said, um, do you want to eat soup? And I was like, no, I'm cool. Like, you know, I do what I usually do when I went to fight week anywhere else. I just eat salad and chicken and salad that's simple you know it's mm-hmm. no rocket science um in that restaurant we uh i said to this the, the young girl i said to her like can you please tell me no salt no nothing on this here just the plain chicken and, and salad on the side which was fine she brought out the chicken and it was uh i could see that there was flavor on the chicken you know like marinated together and she says no it's just herbs there's no uh salt in this here but it tasted like it was salty but mm-hmm. i never thought too much of it i just ate on because i took her word for it too and maybe i did this like three times in that week you know maybe the tuesday wednesday uh monday i think it was mm-hmm. monday uh, monday tuesday and wednesday on the thursday i never ate chicken i just kind of had uh eggs and some salad on the side and not really much on the thursday but once come to thursday i should have been sitting at 100 and 70 mm-hmm. pounds this is where i should have been 170 pounds and i can mm-hmm. cut that 15 pound no problem mm-hmm. so i end up cutting uh 17 and a half pound of water in my body but it was the night before i knew there was like 19 pound i goes what the fuck's going on here mm-hmm. why, why why from monday when i waterloaded on the monday with eight liters i was 78.8 kilograms or 78.5 kilograms and usually like that's with the water in the body too with the eight liters of water on the monday eight liters of water on the tuesday uh, on the Wednesdays, four litres, and then on the Thursdays, just like maybe one litre. But once I got to Thursday, my, the water never even flushed out my body. It stayed right, like, 19 pounds. I was like, what the fuck? I kind of freaked out a wee bit. And then, speaking with Jacob at the same time, I think, you know, when you start freaking out and stress, like, your hormone releases in the body, and then the body just holds on to everything, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, so I says, fuck it, let's go, let's do it. And anyway, so I end up cutting all together. The night before, I cut, like, 10 pounds, and then... Uh, the next day, uh, the day of the weigh-ins, I got up real early. Not that I really slept much anyway, but I got up early. And then I uh, I started cutting more and I got like maybe, I don't know, like six, seven, seven pounds off that day. And then there was still like, the lowest I got to, the lowest I actually got to on the scale was 158 pounds. That's where it was, but I was mm-hmm. done. Like that was three pounds away, but I was done. Mm-hmm. So... Everyone knew that I was missed the weight, you know, time was up, but they gave me to the more time. Mm-hmm. Medical team comes up to try to give me some stuff to, it's, um, it's this stuff to help make your body uh, release uh, fluid in the body, like go for, to pee more, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tried this and we took some uh, some glucose in through my vein, you know, first. Mm-hmm. And uh, so doing all that there and then I uh, had a little couple of ice glasses of water like not the water the ice i just ate the ice not the actual water a couple of cubes and they put some glucose in, in through my blood before they gave me this stuff but it never really worked anyway but i tried it it says this could help get rid of the last three pounds and then once they put that on it put a little bit onto me so it was like 159 pound so i waited for maybe like one hour and i went to try the sauna but the sauna was cold again and then uh, i says that's it i'm done I'm done. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, but it was a little bit warm, but it was no sweat was coming out. It was basically bone dry. So I think altogether I got to like uh, seventeen and a half pound was uh, through fluid out of my body, and maybe more could have came. But I think with so much stress in my mind, I think uh, just uh, the body held on to. But it's not good to be doing all this here. The doctor says maximum what you need to do is maximum for your body is six kilograms mm-hmm. maximum you know or five kilograms but six maximum but i could do six no problem i could do the seven no problem but once it was going over seven and a half eight that was uh, serious problems then and uh mm-hmm. then i said to the matchmaker voice lap okay he says you trying again so i said no but then i did go and try one more time but then i missed and says no i'm done i'm finished okay so I missed by, and it's not like I missed the, by 300 grams, like the fight with Gamer on the second fight. This was 
four pounds. Mm. <laughs> this is fifty uh, percent of your fight purse mm. uh, gone. You know, so like that's what I'm pissed off by. Like, you know, I fucked up that part of the thing, and because I knew, like, I knew if I had come in with a perfect, uh, not killing me still doing that there, like we would have had a, a better fight. The fight wouldn't have been one as one sided. You know, the fight was basically one sided. Me just there in the cage, moving about, and Gamer just touch, 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 one, two, touch, touch, touch. Like, not hitting me very hard punches, but just hitting the same spot every time, every time, every time. And I realised my face, I don't know where, maybe after the the weigh-in, uh, I never actually made the public weigh-in because I started to get sick, you know, because mm. I drunk a little bit and my stomach just completely turned, and then I was just sick for, like, one hour, 30 minutes. Mm. And... Uh, but the medical team had hooked me up to IV and they were pumping IV into my body, but it made me, you know, come round after that time. But uh, I think with so much IV in my body that there was so much water lying in my body because some of the other, uh, another referee had said to me, your body looked like there was a lot of fluid on the outside, you know, but not, not absorbed on the inside into the muscles or into the organs, I think. He says there's water, it lies um, just above your muscle and underneath your skin. And when I looked in the mirror, it looked like that. I looked very bloated out around the side and my arms and everything. I thought, right, this water seems like it's just lying just under my skin. Mm. And then I put two and two together. Once I took a couple of digs in the fight, once I took a couple of punches in the fight, I felt my face, like, squidging up, like, real easy. My eye cut open. There was a cut above the other eye. There was... Um, and then he threw a punch, but I thought it was the finger in the eye, but it wasn't. I felt more like a scrape. Mm -hmm. So it was like the inside of his thumb glove had nicked mm -hmm. this eye here and, and pulled the eye up. And once that eye, once it hit that eye, the eye just swole completely. Mm -hmm. Straight away, automatically that, that eye swole away and I could, couldn't even see him. I could see half of him <laughs> out of this eye and I could see a full mm -hmm. of him on this eye. And then from there, it was it was all downhill from there. I knew it. I just knew it. I just knew it. And after the first round, my coach says, right, come on, right, this is it. You filled it now start to step up a wee bit and I could hear everything they were saying I could uh, see everything but mm -hmm. nothing was working you know mm -hmm. and I'm not going to take anything away from him like he came in shape and prepared like, I'm not going to take anything he came the way he was meant to come on my side the weight thing fucking just pissed me off this is why I come back training straight away because I just says I didn't want that to happen again because it's just uh, stupid you know because I know exactly in my mind if we had a, if this was not the problem, this fight would have been a very, very good fight, you know, because I wanted to just pressure, 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 throw punches, pressure, pressure, and just make it like the second fight, you know. But um, it just wasn't meant to be, and he was the better man on the night, and we know every time you fight it's a different fight, but he was the better man on the night, so I take nothing away from him, and... Uh, and and that and that's it. There's mm. there's nothing else I can really say about that. It was just kind of me fucking up my weight again for the third time. And uh, but I know I've missed weight before, but I've still been good in the fights. But this time here, it was uh, I don't know. It was I think maybe my body had too much IV in my body because my face marked too easy. Like I I would mark up, you know, but I would never ever cut open so easy or anything like that. My face was mm. swollen like uh, very, very quick after the one round. My face was sw swollen up after one round. And uh, so I just said I'm not going to do that again. So one more time, one more time I'm going to try lightweight. And if I can make this weight good, then I'm okay. So I know it needs to be done. Just keep working in between the fights and mm. no more walking around at like 88 kilograms in between the fights it's not good because I'm catching up for like four weeks to get my weight where I need to be and then it's uh, it's just hard when you're getting older too, your metabolism's just not as fast also so uh, mm -hmm. it's nobody else's fault I don't blame anybody else for anything about that there because it's my fault for just me messing the weight up because um, we would have had a way better fight, I just know in my mind we would have had a better fight if that mm -hmm. hadn't been the case I know for a fact but that is what it is, and I just step it to the side, and then I go into the next fight and just make the weight, say nothing, put on a real good fight, and and, and move forward for there. Because I, the plan for me is to, I don't know what gamer's doing if he's going to do this other fight and he's disappeared. I don't know what the deal is, but my plan is to make the weight right, win the next fight, win one more fight after that, and then see where we're at to fight for the belt again. Mm -hmm. That, that's where we're at and be a wee bit more uh, 
professional about my weight. I'm not going too heavy. That's the problem, you know. Mm -hmm. What hurts more, uh, the fact that you have lost uh, your fight with Mateusz Gamrot or the fact that he took from your purse 50%? Um, Honestly. <laughs> um, I think probably losing the fight more mm -hmm. and because... Right, fair enough, you get money, right? Okay, we're getting decent money, good money, for sure. Mm -hmm. So he gets... I remember him saying to me in an interview, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. you're going to give me a 100% of your purse if you miss the weight? I was like, fuck that, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. If you want, you know, you can take 50 if you want, no problem, but not, not 100. But he knew I was overweight, and I looked, and I said, fuck, I look heavy, man. Oh, my God. Even some guys text me saying, Norman looks real heavy. 79 mm -hmm. kilograms I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the wow. fuck? That's crazy. I should be... Uh, 77 kilograms heaviest mm -hmm. maximum this is where it should be maximum mm -hmm. and when i looked at that video back i was like i looked like a, a middleweight uh sitting there <laughs> mm, my god yeah but uh, I definitely losing the fight because i know like like whenever i'm cutting weight sometimes i can turn into a fucking a crab at motherfucker and like it's not good for my coaches too because they know they know what I can do when I fight. They know they can see what I can do when I fight and stuff like this here. Mm. And uh, he just knew that I was killing myself trying to make this weight, and he knew exactly it was uh, this was the main problem for this fight. Mm. Uh, but you know, you got to live and learn for that and move on to the next fight, which is. In a way, I'm more happy about it too that it happened because then it's like maybe if I'd have won the fight, I would have just been, ah, I'll just keep doing the same. You know, if I'd have won the fight and still struggled with that weight cut, I would have probably did the same as the next time. So this time, it's not going to happen. I'm going to give it one more try for lightweight. If I miss the lightweight or there's real problems, I'm just going to say to them, uh, the bosses and the matchmaker, let me just fight at the welterweight, or if you want to fight catchweight, or maybe if you want to enter just this new weight at 73 kilograms with you belt, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Norman, tell me please, because we saw some uh, pictures uh, behind the scene, from the behind of the scene, uh, when you were cutting the weight, um, you took some, some photos and uh, give on your social medias, and um, also Maciej Kawulski was uh, telling to the uh, press uh, during the weigh the official weigh that um, there is a bunch of doctors in your room and they are trying to to fix you and uh, i want to know how did it look like from the formally um thing the, the formally uh part of this uh, this situation because first of all this was supposed to be a fight um for the title so um Maciej said that he took the belt from you uh, this was supposed to be a fight in, for five rounds and you agreed for this that this will be five rounds even without the belt and also i would like to know uh, how did it happen that uh, mateusz uh, got 50 percent of your purse not 30 percent it was it a, a thing that uh, could um, make him to fight with you uh, still uh, even if you were too heavy um, how did it look like could you please tell us about these three facts um the reason for the pictures was because i think the people maybe thought that I was playing about or playing games or something like that there. So Martin had says to me, Martin was in the room also taking pictures and videos and whatever, and my coach asked him what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Why? He says, just to prove that, you know, what's happening is happening. Because it was mm -hmm. like, we were ready to go to the weigh-ins, the public weigh-ins, and it was just about maybe five minutes before I was in the toilet, and I'd maybe drunk about 500 litre, or 500 ml of water, or my rehydration drink, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and my stomach just turned, so I just went and brought up that water, and then the because there was nothing in my stomach, completely bone dry, <clears throat> I uh, started like he dry heaving, like you know when you be sick and nothing comes up, mm -hmm. like this, uh, and uh, I just kept doing that for about an hour and a half, and my back was getting sore around my right side, and uh, I don't know, maybe that's the kidney area, but my back was getting sore and it was tight and everything, I could feel it, so my coach was rubbing it and doing all this other, mm -hmm. uh, rubbing my back and stuff like that, and like, Why did uh, you decide to, to fight only three rounds? Uh, it was like KSW wanted you to fight five rounds, or uh, why did you Why did you no, make they asked, this decision? They, they asked me. They asked mm -hmm. me because I okay. came. My coach had says to them, uh, this fight's off. Like, I'm not going to let my fighter fight like this. There's no chance. Mm -hmm. Look at the state of them. And uh, then 
after a wee while, just kind of came around a bit, maybe like a few hours later, got mm-hmm. rehydrated again. And then I'd spoke with Martin then maybe later on that evening and uh, the fight was almost cancelled. But then he says, you know, this is a big fight. This is uh, mm-hmm. a lot of pay-per-views been sold. It's a good publicity or good uh, promotion for this fight. And yeah. I'd asked to put the fight on the next card. Once I mm-hmm. realised I knew I was going to miss by miles, I asked, could you put it on the... the I think maybe August card, mm-hmm. if they're doing this August card or September card, I asked to move it, but he says, there's no chance it can be moved. You have to fight. So mm-hmm. I says, fuck it. I'm not going to whine. I'm not going to whine no more. Just just make the weight or make as much as you can of the weight mm-hmm. and uh, and fight. He says, do you want to fight three rounds or five rounds? I says, let's just fight five rounds. A non-title fight five rounds then, says to me. I says, no problem. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, and this fifty percent of your purse, uh, it was like you had it in your contract earlier, or maybe this is the thing that came up uh, during this uh, problems with weighing cut. I don't know exactly. I never even looked at my contract, but I know if you miss by like, if you miss by a few hundred, if you miss weight just by small amount, it's thirty percent, and then yes. if you miss weight by over like one kilo, mm-hmm. I think. If it's under one kilo, you're thirty percent. If it's over one kilo, it's forty. And then if it's over, I don't know if it's like a two kilo. Yeah. If it's near two kilo or something, that's mm-hmm. that's what I heard. It's fifty percent, you know. So. Okay. Uh, I, I need to look the contract, but from what, uh, kind of from what I read before, if you if you lose uh, or if you miss by over a certain amount, it goes higher each mm-hmm. time, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Maximum is fifty percent. Okay. And uh, I says, fuck yeah, here Dola. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah. so you know yeah. another Polish word. <laughs> Norman. <laughs> Norman, okay, uh, one more question about this uh, weight cutting. Uh, do you plan to cooperate again with Jakub Maurich, uh, with Kuba Maurich, with your dietist? Uh, how, how, do you, how do you see your future with him? Do you plan to, to cooperate with him still? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm open to the offer. They work with him, no problem. But it's, uh... It's nothing to do with Jacob. I know people were going to slate him on the saying it was his fault for... Mm. It wasn't his fault. It was just the problem in the fight week. This is what it is. I know what it is. Mm. I told him exactly what it is. And, and that's it. So that's the only problem that needs fixed. Okay. And, and pro- possibly more. Like I know my weight could have been, been even lower, but I did miss out on some... Uh, a lot of cycling. You know, I did miss out on a lot of cycling that I could have done maybe for like three weeks. Mm-hmm. And between us, because this really helps to get your weight down. You know, you can do it first thing in the morning or last thing after training. Mm-hmm. Uh, Forty-five minutes to one hour. This is what I did for the last fight against Josek, and my weight was only four kilos out. I was from mm-hmm. from the night before. Mm-hmm. I mean, this was way under where I've ever been. Yeah. Uh, this fight here, I missed out on some of that. So there's so many things that I can fix uh, going into the next fight, and uh, and that's it. You know, and make the weight properly for the next fight because. I know, like, if I could have, uh, if there was no, like, as, if I didn't have them two knee problems too, like, which I couldn't run, I haven't run for the last few camps, but I was sprinting at the start, but my knee was getting sore, and then I couldn't even cycle, it got that bad, uh, then, so, this, this is a problem, because this, you need to do, I need, I need to do this here, you need to do that, that work, like cycling or road work, to help get your weight down, and this is what I missed out on a lot, because I know my weight would have been lower for that also, and we possibly would never have had the problem, and then in the fight week, I had that problem with what I said. My body held on to all the water. So it's not like I went to like fucking KFC and fucking chunked KFC every night whenever <laughs> in the fight week. This mm. is what people seem to think. Like I went to fucking some big takeout restaurant and ate a pile of garbage. No, it's <laughs> not like that. It's just uh, the sodium was held on to all the water in my body. And then I had to try and flush it all out and I couldn't. So but another couple of things for the fight week to drink drink water distilled water too so i'm going to do that the next time also so it's um that's it i'm open still to work with jacob but it's not really um because he's very knowledgeable and i know there was a lot of people slating him like it was on his plate oh why did norma sweep by this much blah 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 but no it was all on me so there's nobody else to blame for that there so i just mm-hmm. clear that up with him but i don't like people coming on the internet just fucking rip me off and saying this and saying that mm-hmm. uh, because I take the blame for the missing the weight, you know, I'm not blaming anybody else for that, so yeah. it's, um, that's it, we're all good, so I'm looking to fight maybe uh, October or November time. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I have the question about this uh, this future in KSW, but before that, I would like to ask you about this one moment after the fight when you took the microphone and you uh, talked with uh, Mateusz Gamrot and he said, uh, if you will say sorry to me and my family uh, and and for the, all the Polish people for your trash talking and uh, and that's and so on and so on and you took the microphone and you said uh, that you give your honor to to uh, and all the respect for Mateusz and for all the people was it embarrassing for you? No, not at all. I I always did say if uh, if the man beats me, I'll lift the microphone and say congratulations, well done, and. I wasn't going to say sorry like that. It's like doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt me to say sorry to someone like for maybe something that was said. I, I mean, this is just purely promotion for the fight. This is what it is. This is what this game is. You know, no, no matter what anyone says, like a lot of people bought this pay per view. We know this pay per view so really, really good for this fight, and uh, a lot of it was to do with promoting the fight, and that's what I'm there to do too. You know, whether it's me talking shit to someone or mm. if it's me. Uh, trying to poke at someone in certain ways it's whatever way they take it so I'd be first to have my hand up and say okay right maybe I said some things about your team that I shouldn't have said a lot of truthful things too but then again the truth hurts but I mean maybe I said some things to you and Boris about stuff like that but I think most people can see it as like a funny joke you know mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't have to say sorry to his family because I never ever spoke about the man's family and I think someone says to me that he uh he mentioned that in an interview after. Mm -hmm. No, nah, he never said, I never even spoke one thing about his family. I wouldn't do anything like that there. But maybe his team I did say some things about, but not all the guys in the team, just maybe him, maybe Boris. Mm -hmm. I've got nothing against the guys from the Red Dragon gym. Like, I think there's a lot of great fighters there, um, tough fighters too. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, I think maybe it was a wee bit sensitive on that side, you know, that I... I said this and said that, but I had to hold my hands up because I came in fucked up weight, never put on a good fight like I knew I should have done. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had to put my hands up and say, right, fair enough, the better man won, you're the double champion. So mm -hmm. sorry for some things that was maybe said in the fight camp, but, and that's it. So Okay. Okay, and Norman, so let's uh, look in the bright face of the future and what now for Norman Park in KSW? Do you see yourself maybe in a rematch with Martin Wrzosek? Because some people are um, doing this uh, fantastic uh, matchmaking, uh, fantasy matchmaking, and they are um, trying to fit in uh, Wojsław Wrzeski's shoes and they will um, probably would like to see you with Martin in, in a second match. Uh, especially that Martin just lost his fight with, uh, with Boris Mankowski. Well, I think that kind of makes sense, that fight. But mm -hmm. also, too, with him coming off, he's got the close fight with me and the close fight with Boris. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, I was chatting to some other people, too, like a guy that helps me in the fights and stuff. He says, maybe let Josek win one fight, okay? You mm -hmm. know, because wins matter, you know. I know even if close fights, you lose. But they have the win that matters, you know. Maybe he has one win, and maybe I fight someone and have one win, and then we have the rematch. So then that means I've got after that I've got two fights left in my, left in my contract, right? Mm -hmm. So then after this fight, uh, we both win a fight. Then a fight with Josic. That fight with Josic, and if I can beat Josic, uh, that leaves me with one fight left in my contract. Okay. Then I can go and negotiate a new contract, maybe going into all being well, it's two wins, and then that mm -hmm. puts me in shot for the title, depending on where Mateus is, if he's going to go to the UFC, from what we hear, mm -hmm. after one more fight, we hear he wants to go to the UFC, but mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to, personally, I don't think he's going to go, personally, for, from me, but mm -hmm. I would like to see him go there too, to see how, how well he does, and um, so if he disappears, the belt's left there, then that means, depending on where Boris is in the picture, or there's loads of guys in the picture. I mean, like, there's maybe uh, who's the guy? Arthur Savinsky's back there again. Mm -hmm. After I fought with him, he's got two knockouts. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's loads of people in the lightweight division now. There's uh, Marion. There's Tajetsko. There's mm -hmm. maybe like eight fighters there. So there's lots of mm -hmm. fights. But uh, we hear we hear maybe KSW is going to go back to Croatia. We hear there. We hear something like that. I don't know if it's true, mm -hmm. but I would love to go there. And maybe fight a Croatian guy, um, next or something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, make the weight properly. Show mm -hmm. that. Show them right. Go in and say right. Okay, fuck. I show them. Make the weight. No problem. 
okay, like, here we go. Give me another lightweight fight against Shiosik if he's won, he, he's won his fight. Mm. And then we have that big rematch again. And then uh, fight with Boris. Like, there's obviously, I'm definitely going to fight Boris again. He knows mm. that because I says to him after I did the interview in the ring, I says I shook his team's hand. Like, you know, this is just promotion, guys, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And once I got to Boris, he goes, I like what you say. I says, ha, we've got unfinished business, pal. You know, <laughs> you want that rematch? We still got unfinished business, so we're going to do that again. Nice. So, like, there's still a good fight left with Boris, okay? And mm-hmm. uh, the fight with Josic. There's loads of fights there uh, to fight, but I think uh, maybe if Josic has a fight and I have a fight first mm-hmm. and we both win, maybe make that rematch uh, happen after that. Mm-hmm. Or if if they want to just make it straight away, then it's up to them. But I think it's a better idea if he wins one fight against someone and I win one fight against someone. Then mm-hmm. we rematch. When will you be ready to return to the cage? Oh, here, I get no injuries. <laughs> Touch wood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, is the first, this is the first time in a long time where I've never... I've never had an injury. You see, the last fight was Josic. Mm-hmm. I was out maybe for six weeks after the fight. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Just eat eat food, eat food, eat everything. There, mm-hmm. I was away up to 88 kilograms. Mm-hmm. But I says, no, there is nothing to complain about now. I says, the face is banged up. One week, look at this beautiful face. Look, <laughs> look at this. Just one scratch, yeah. <laughs> Just one scrape. That's the war mark that Gamer left me. That's his mark to say, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, Norman. <laughs> that's, that's it. I'll be looking to fight maybe October or November time. Mm-hmm. So just keep training. And before we before we go, I just want to say um, there's a wee guy from our club, uh, Reese McKee, who just got signed to the UFC. I've heard that. And yeah, yeah, he's young. He's 24 years old, and he's fighting at welterweight. He's fighting. Um, he's fighting against the Swedish guy who trains All Stars Gym, and there's a lot of hype around this guy too. So. Uh, just want to give a big shout out to him. This is his first fight, mm-hmm. his four fight contract, and uh, we believe he's going to get the job done and uh, have many fights in the UFC. It's been uh, it's been long overdue, you know, and he's had a lot of tough fights. So now it's his time to go there and shine where where he, where he deserves to be. So it's a, a big shout out to him and <laughs> my coach, who's uh, just back from Poland. Mm-hmm. He had to go to the wedding that wedding. Once he came back from Poland on the Sunday. We mm-hmm. had to go straight to a wedding on that Sunday, Good. and uh, later the next week, ah, right here you have to go to Abu Dhabi. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nice one. So he's away <laughs> okay, now, so, so he's, like, he's getting about. He's getting some air miles in. So uh, <laughs> Norman, for sure you will need to help me to fix the interview with your friend uh, after he win, uh, after he wins his first fight in 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 UFC. Okay, no problem. No problem. I will. I will. Would like to really talk with him because uh, uh, in our editorial, editorial, a lot of uh, my friends who who also write some articles for in, in the cage and other reporters from from our editorial, they always said that uh, this guy is uh, a very prospect, perspective guy. So so. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. I'll say to him. I'll send him a message. Nice. <laughs> okay, Norman, uh, thank you very much. And uh, it was very nice to see you smiling. I really hope that you will come back soon to to the uh, cage of, uh, of KSW. Thank you for your fight. And uh, sorry for your loss, but I know that this is just, just a step in your career. So, That's Thank good. you, Martina. Thank you. It's my pleasure. For me, it's always a pleasure too. Thank you. Speak to you soon.